Hello and welcome back. This is the Mini Town Bicycle series video number eight. In the last video, we tacked up the main triangle, took it off the jig, and then welded the main triangle. In this video, we're gonna figure out the chainstay and dropout situation, bend the chainstays, and then fixture them up onto the jig. Let's get started. This is the bottom view of the chainstays uh, because the drive side's right here and uh, this is a side view. And so one of the things I noticed is that, uh, this is out of BikeCAD by the way, if I take the dropout and I've got these sliding dropouts, so if I take this and place it where it would normally go. Uh, it doesn't quite meet up with the chainstay properly. It's actually on the very outside of it. Uh, it, it doesn't line up. And so I can only assume that uh, BikeCAD doesn't offset the chainstay for sliding dropouts. It's assuming that this part is right here rather than out here because of the sliding dropout. So um, I'm gonna need to well, what I will do is manually draw uh, a new uh, dropout with new bends to accommodate this offset. Um, and also, it's, it's possible that I just didn't set something up correctly. It might not be BiCAD's fault, it might be my fault. I was going to redraw this and then I realized I have to do the seat stays as well. So I changed my mind. What I did was I brought it into BikeCAD and I, uh, I was able to offset these by changing the axle width. So before it was 135, which is a normal 135 millimeter axle. So to get the offset I needed, which was 10 millimeters on both sides, I entered in a 155 millimeter axle. And so that gets me the offset I need. I drew a few um, guides, so I kind of drew the, uh, the contour of this. And it looks like I'll be able to stick this in here. Um, I've marked where I want to cut the tube, which is right here. Uh, if I go all the way in like this, then I'm going to need to cut slots, and I don't think I want to do that. so. I'm going to just cut it a little short and uh, this should fit right on there like that. And then when it's at an angle, uh, when the tube is bent, it should fit in here like that. Uh, I might need to cut a tiny little slot or file a tiny bit to get this to fit when it's at an angle, but I think for the most part this is a good place to start. Uh, the next step for this tube uh, is to um, measure out where this will be and then where the bend is and then I will bend it. The order of operation will be making this bend, then this bend, and then uh, mitering the bottom bracket shell end. This is the uh, Cobra tube bender. It's set up with a dual three-quarter inch uh, die and uh, I got this actually pre-order back when Joe first um, was selling these I pre-ordered and uh, that's why it doesn't have uh, I think it's I think the uh, other say tube bender somewhere um, but I like that mine doesn't have that because it it's uh, it's kind of like one of the early models this is my uh, first bend um, I've only done a practice tube in here once so this is the first time using it for real. So I might be a little slow, please bear with me. Uh, yeah. 
I don't really know what I'm doing here. Okay, let's see. Let's get down to zero. So I've marked my tubes where I want to bend them. Let's see, gotta go a little lower. I'm probably gonna cut the ends of these off a little bit on the bottom. So they don't need to be perfect, but I think it'd be good to get them as close to, I wonder if I should go a little lower. So according to the drawing, the length of the bend from beginning to end where it does its little curve, is going to be 20 millimeters. Uh, I should have marked that here it's probably a good idea to mark those now. So I've marked both tubes. The extent of the bend where it starts to where it ends will be about this distance as according to the drawing. I'm gonna do a bend this way and then I'm gonna bend, uh, bend back. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Feels about right. All right, so I need uh, about a 10.6 bend. Maybe I'll come to 15 uh, because these will deflect back. I'm gonna come to right about here. I'm gonna see 12. the tube 7.6 and we want 10.6 I really like how easy it is to get this thing back on go a little more and check it it's it's way easier. If you remember some of my older videos, I've had various setups um, with my uh, homemade press, and it was really hard. To, uh, to, you know, I'd have to, I'd have to unscrew the um, the press and then like take the take the tubes literally out of the press in order to check the angle. But uh, yeah, this is a lot easier. It's perfect. It's at 10.6 exactly. My calculations were a little bit off, so uh, here's the tube set up. The bend is actually happening here, but it should have the end should have extended out to here. So what I did is I uh, I kind of bent it in the wrong place. So what I need to do in the on the next set of tubes, these are uh, I can't use these now, <laughs> uh, but the next set of tubes, what I need to do is. So like, if this is my uh, bend point right here, then I'm gonna need to come up and set it up at 15, 15 millimeters up the tube, and this is where zero would be marked on the bender. I overshot it a little <laughs> by like one degree. I'm not going to sweat it though. It's at 11.5. All right, so even though I overshot it, this is 
Yeah, it looks perfect. So now for the next band, which is this guy right here. Okay, that's where I want it. And I want it to go this way. And we're gonna, I'm gonna drop it down 20 millimeters lower because that's where it likes to be. And of course, de depending on the um, how long the bend is, so basically the bend begins 20 mi millimeters lower than the zero degree mark on the die. All right, there it is, 6.2. I'm gonna call that close enough. I can't quite put this in place. It's a little too long, so, but you get the idea. I've got the uh, chain stays all mitered on the ends and uh, so now the next step is to um, attach the dropouts to the, the jig and what I need to do is make a dummy axle so I'm just going to use um, I'm going to use this 3 8 uh, threaded fine pitch threaded rod and 3 8 nuts and washers I was gonna get fancy with this, but I realized I want to keep this build um, pretty basic for people who don't have a lathe or anything like that. So uh, it's done. That took a pretty long time. If you have a lathe, I don't recommend doing this, uh, but if you don't have a lathe, this is a pretty good option. I think what I'll do here is I will uh, TIG weld 
probably TIG braze these two nuts in place so that this doesn't move and then do the same with, with this side as well. I do not want these to move. Um, I've got them all measured up. It's a little bit wider than 135, which is fine. Um, it's better to be a little wider than a little bit uh, narrow. And then, uh, yeah, so obviously if you've got a lathe, I recommend just doing this because this is kind of a pain to do. Um, you can also buy these. So if you don't have a lathe and you want something like this, you can probably buy one of these. All right, so yeah, there was a uh, pretty bad fumes coming off this thing. So I cracked the garage door open a bit. And uh, I think the fumes were from the, uh, I put Loctite uh, nut lock, nut, lo <laughs> nut lock, uh, what is it called? Uh, nut glue, you know, glue nuts. <laughs> uh, that stuff that holds the nuts, nuts from turning. Anyway, uh, that was on there. And of course uh, it was burning up and making these nasty fumes. I uh, spent a little time to dial the jig in, so I've got my uh, rear axle uh, set up. It is uh, 10 millimeters lower than the center of the bottom bracket. I have a bottom bracket rise because this is a 20 inch wheel bike. All right, so let's, uh, and I've got my distance set as well. Let's get this thing on here. So I have the left side fitting pretty nicely and uh, the right side is a bit long so I'm going to need to, yeah I can't quite, I'm going to need to take a little off here. All right, so I had to give it a go around about uh, three times and now I've got the same length on both chainstays. All right, that is a wrap. Chainstays are on the jig, on the frame. Uh, dropouts are in place. So the next step is to cap off these chainstays and tack these things onto the frame. And then we'll get a wheel on there just to make sure it's all lined up properly because uh, I honestly have no idea what's going to happen with that. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>